Hey folks, Corey here with Fist and Stone War Gaming. Today, I'm going to show you how I painted up these Chaos Beastmen from Blackstone Fortress using contrast paints for a quick, easy finish, then added a few extra details to make them stand out just a little more. Here's a look at the paints I'll be using in the order I'm using them. The colors are very similar to what I've used in my other Servants of the Abyss. If you're interested in how I painted those up, I'll leave a link in the description down below to my Blackstone Fortress playlist. Starting off, we're going to use Gilliman Flesh, and as the name might imply, this goes on all the fleshy areas of the miniatures. Really, with all these miniatures, the areas are the same. They have some exposed legs, arms, hands, and of course the face. I'm just going to work around the model quickly here and make sure I pick everything out that I want to be a flesh color. I'm not worrying about being precise because I'm going to be able to cover up any splash over with later colors. As a reminder, with these contrast paints, I'm going to work from the lighter colors to the darker colors. That allows me to be a little bit sloppy on the first couple of passes, and then I'll come back in with the darker colors to clean up those edges. Second color is going to be Agaros Dunes. I'm going to use this yellowy, tanny type color for the undershirts and some of the cloth. It's a good dirtyish color to use on these Chaos models while also giving a little bit of variation to the color palette you're using. Up next is Skeleton Horde. I'm going to use this color on all the wraps of the miniature. They have some wrist and leg wraps. Kind of gives them that cloth type feel. This color is also great for bone, so I'm going to use it on the horns. I'm also going to apply this on some of the skull details, but later on in the process. Next color is going to be Basilicanum Gray. And now I've moved on to one of the darker colors. Here I'm trying to be very careful now when I'm moving around the edges and the borders of other colors. Uh, as you can see here, when I'm working on the pants where this Basilicanum Gray is going to go, I'm very careful about not getting it on to the Gilliman Flesh or the Agaros Dunes colors that have already been completed. But other areas which I don't want to be Basilicanum Gray, which are going to be darker colors, they really don't matter. I can splash over a little bit here too. I'm also going to apply the Basilicanum Gray to the hooves of these miniatures. Next up is Snake Bite Leather. This color is going to have a very limited use on the models, but I'm using it because it matches what I did with some of the earlier Trader Guard models. Using it here for the stock on the pistols. Only two of these Chaos Beastmen have it, but it's a nice little accent color that helps tie these Beastmen in with the rest of the Servants of the Abyss. Up next is Flesh Terrors Red. I'm going to pick out a few of the cloth details with this. This is another good accent color. It's a nice darker red that goes well with the Chaos models. And it also is tying it again with some models I've done previously for the Blackstone Fortress set. Wildwood is next. Now this is really one of the darker colors. I'm going to use this on all of the fur on the miniature, all the leather details like the belts, the pouches, and the holsters. And lastly, I'm going to paint all the hair, both the facial hair and the hair on their head in this color. You'll notice some details on the back of the hair and the head. Don't worry about those. Just paint them right over with the Wildwood. It's a lot easier in this case to do it this way. And I'll come back and clean those up afterwards. And the last contrast paint is Black Templar. This is going to be everything that's left that's white on the miniature now. Doing this one last because it's the darkest color. And it's going to cover over any of the previous colors. I use this both to represent black and as a base coat for the metallic step that I'm going to do later. So this is going to go everywhere over the weapons, over the armor, over the arm guards, the strapping, the grenade, pretty much anything that's left at this point. Do take your time with this color. It's going to be the longest step in the process because it has the most area to cover. And you also want to be as careful as you can with this one because, again, it will cover over any of the other colors. I'm taking my time here and really making sure I don't splash any of this on any of the other colors that I've already painted. And once you finish off the Black Templar, you could base the model, call it done at this point. But I like to pick out a few more details to make these guys stand out just a little bit more on the tabletop. First thing I'm going to do is go to the metallics. Here I'm using Runefang Steel, which is kind of the mid-tone silver. Not too bright, not too dark. Gives us some room to both shade and highlight. And only applying one coat. This will cover really well over the Black Templar that we've laid down for anything that we want to be silver metallic. In this case, I'm using the silver to pick out weapons and armor, spikes on the armor, chainmail, gun barrels, things like that. Sticking with metallics, I'm moving on to Balthazar Gold now for a bit of an accent color. I'm going to pick out the chaos symbol, 
the hilt and handguard on this chain sword along with the riveted detail at the top and I'm also going to pick out the nose or earrings that these miniatures are wearing. After the metallics I'm going to switch over to Wraithbone. I'm going to use this color to pick out the skulls on the back of the hair that we previously had covered over with that wildwood. These will get a coat of skeleton hoard once they dry. Then I'm going to move on to the teeth of the miniature just using some gentle pressure to tap against the teeth and get a little bit of off-white on there. And I'm going to pick out just the white of the eye. I'm not going to bother with a pupil for these guys. And lastly, we're going to pick out any of the other skull and teeth detail that might be dangling around. With those wraith bone details picked out, I'm going to move on to a quick shade wash with null oil. This is just going to go right over all of the metallics, both the gold and the silver. Last couple steps now are going to be dry brushing. While we're waiting for the shade to dry on the metallics, I'm going to use some Bane Blade Brown to dry brush over the fur and hair color. This will use the natural relief of the model to help pick out some highlights very quickly. And then staying with dry brushing, moving on to Necron Compound, and this will go over all of the metallic areas to give them a little bit of a highlight. Once I finish with the Necron compound, I base the miniatures in the same fashion I've done all of my other Blackstone Fortress miniatures to date. There's a link to that video on the top left of the screen now, and it's also in that playlist in the description down below. I was able to make short work of these Chaos Beastmen using the same concepts I've used for the previous miniatures that I've done. Using the contrast paints allowed me to get through them quickly with a nice, solid result. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video.